Well, any way you slice it, homemade bread is the best, especially when it's banana bread. Our U of I student chef is sharing her recipe in our CI Kitchen today. Natalie Rosenberg is here. So we're glad to have you back, Natalie. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So we're making a comfort food, basically bread. Yes, and what's nice, what I like about the recipe is you can kind of find this all over your kitchen. The bananas, we know, they ripen fast. So this is a great recipe to kind of get rid of those bananas and a fun um Bread you can eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hey, why not? <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner, and in between for yeah. a good snack. Yeah, and dessert. Why not? So we need some bananas, obviously. Yes. Um, we've got some ripe ones there. How many does it take? It takes four bananas. Okay. And then we're going to just start mashing them up first. Um, what actually, are the steps? Yeah. So um, if you want to start with the dry ingredients, we have just sure. simple ingredients. If you want to, you can dump them all three. We've got okay. um, the flour. All right. Just regular all-purpose flour. All -purpose flour. And then okay. right over there is salt. All of it? All of it. Okay, and then we got baking soda. All right, and it goes, and we'll give that a little stir. Yes, and then I'm actually going to start with um, just a vegetable oil um, mixture, canola oil. Um, same thing, actually. I just learned that today from my teacher. What What did you learn? Vegetable oil and canola oil. It's just a blend, so it is the oh. same thing. Yeah. So if you if you're wondering, oh, do I have the vegetable or canola? Oil? Um, canola. This is actually soybean oil too. Okay. So um, any type of oil you can use. All right. And so we're just going to give this a little stir, kind of get these incorporated. And then um, we're going to put the bananas in next. And some people, they just, I'm going to use a spatula. You can use um, a potato masher. What about a hand mixer? Hand mixer, yeah, those those are definitely probably the easiest. But it's kind of fun to get the, if you want to take some bananas. Sure, let's knock it out. Yeah, let's peel some of those bananas. <laughs> I can totally see my kids, you know, wanting to get mashing and yeah. helping out in the kitchen with this. Yeah, it's a good interactive activity with kids. It's easy, kind of get your hands dirty, which I like. Yeah. Now, is this on the Bevere's recipe or menu, you or know, is this just something of your creation? Yeah, it's just kind of something of my creation. Um, it's something that's easy to make, and then um, for the holidays, um, I actually... Um, learn how to make it dairy free also they make um substitutes of sour cream and the chocolate chips so if oh. anyone you know you know sometimes with birthday parties someone has an allergy um it's really helpful to see if um i'm gonna give this a little bit of a mash right hand mixer definitely would have been easier but hey <laughs> i need some strength we do we're working up some elbow grease yeah. here and that's just gonna make it taste even better yes yes you knowing that we put a little extra oomph in it yeah and also it's okay to keep it you know i made it a little chunkier too some people kind of like those big pieces of banana so oh, right why not okay. why not why not so you said you found some other modifications that you could use instead of the chocolate chips yeah what else could you use um so they i actually found dairy free chocolate chips really yeah, so they make, um, and then they make dairy-free sour cream as well, so I said, why not try it? Um, do a, You know, a lot of people now are doing the substitutes, and people, a lot of people have allergies that you don't realize, so right. especially with dairy, um, it is a little helpful. Yeah. So I'm, okay. Then we got some eggs. Is that going to help bind it all together? Yes, it is. Exactly. So I'm going to crack one egg at a time, give it a little mix. Did you come up with this recipe yourself? I wish. No, I actually, I, yeah, I wish I was a recipe guru. A guru. Um, I find most of my recipes on the internet. A big thing, though, is you got to kind of look at the reviews because some people tell you, oh, did it fail? Um, Try this instead of that. Yeah, and a lot with the substitutes as well. So, um, yeah, Google is a great place for everything, but recipes, especially with blogging now, I feel like a lot of places are... Oh, using, right. Are using the internet for good. And Pinterest. Can't forget about yeah. that. Yeah. So many recipes on there. Pinterest people use a lot as well. So I think um, that's a great that's a great tool as well. Okay, then we've got the sour cream over there. How yes. much of that are we putting in? We're actually putting all of that in. How much is that? Um, that's about a cup of sour cream. Okay, and then we've got our chocolate chips. We're just going to fold those in? Yes, that is correct. When do the dry ingredients get in? After all the wet? After all the wet. We're going to do finish the wet ingredients, and then we're going to put the dry. And the last step is actually, you're right, the folding of the chocolate chips. Okay, how how hot and how long? Um, it's going to bake at about 350 for 60 minutes, kind of depending on your oven. I always recommend start at 60 and then you can always kind of double check and Do see the toothpick test yes exactly make sure the toothpick comes out clean um, and make sure that you kind of want to test all areas because sometimes people just test the middle instead of the side oh. and they're like oh it's ready but it turns out that not everything got um, cooked all the way got cooked all the way all right Natalie, we're gonna, we're gonna get all of this incorporated <laughs> into the oven we'll have the big reveal coming up so stay with us we'll have a recipe on CILiving.tv after today's